meaning of the parable. The seed is God's word. The seeds that fell on the footpath represent those who hear the message only to have the devil come and take it away from their hearts and to prevent them from believing and being saved. The seeds on the rocky soil represent those who hear the message and receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they believe for a while, then they fall away when they face temptation. The seeds that fell among the thorns represent those who hear the message, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life. And so they never grow into maturity. And the seeds that fell on the good soil represent honest, good-hearted people who hear God's word, cling to it, and patiently produce a huge harvest. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bow your head with me and let's pray. God, we just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. We want to thank you for a deep river of grace and mercy. Yes, Lord. God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. We want to thank you for a deep river yes, of your divine presence. Uh -huh. God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you Lord. We want to thank you for a deep river yes. of your love and kindness. Uh -huh. And Lord, we come this morning to worship you and give you praise, glory, and honor. Yes, Part of our worship, Lord, we want to give you now our full attention. I want you to look, remove all the distractions of, of our mind, of our heart, and even our body, aches and pains that will prevent us from hearing the word of God. God, we pray that you would speak to every heart and mind, men and women, boys and girls that are here, and that you would publish the truth of your divine word. Oh, Lord, let none of us leave like we came in, but let us all leave touched by the finger of your love. Lord, your finger has power to beat demonic influences. Yes. Your finger has power to heal the sick body. Yes. Your finger has power to soothe the troubled mind. Mm -hmm. And we yield to your touch right now. Yes. This is our prayer. These are our praises given in the name that is above every name. The name of the mighty and matchless Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. God's people said it. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell the neighbor, thank God you're here. Thank God you're here. Because there is a word from the Lord. Tell them, neighbor, just for a few minutes. Word of the Lord this morning. Is sowing seeds and shining light in COVID time. Amen. Look on the other side and say, thank God you're here. Thank God. We can really have church now, now that you're here. The neighbor, there is a word from the Lord. And the word of the Lord this morning is sowing seeds and shining light in COVID time. Amen. Just wave at him because you're not supposed to be shaking people's hand and have your seat. Uh -huh. the third, this is the third Sunday in African American History Month. And on this third Sunday, uh, we're going to speak on the third of the three Christian metaphors that describe uh, the Christian life. Yeah. The Bible says we are soldiers, athletes, and farmers. That's right. In my teaching at this church, I have stressed this. The Bible says we are soldiers, athletes, and farmers. Yeah. And on first Sunday, we talked about the clash of powers that was uplifting our existence as soldiers. Uh, last Sunday, we talked about don't harden your heart. That was on our existence as an athlete, right. for no athlete can compete long if they have a hard heart. And today we're going to talk about sowing seeds, and we're going to talk about being a farmer. Amen. The seed, uh, the Bible said, is the word of God. Somebody said the word of God. Word of God. And the only way to know the truth of the Bible is to live the Bible. That's right. Many scholars have pontificated on what the Bible says, but the ones who really know what the Bible says are those who attempt to live what it says. Uh -huh. The Bible is not just a book for you to enjoy or to philosophize over. The Bible is a book that makes demands on your life. The Bible demands to be tried. 
the Bible demands to be tested. Oh, I wish I had enough people in church to say that. Uh, the Bible makes demand to be obeyed. But can I go ahead and talk? I believe I will anyway. If you try the Bible by the way you live, if you test the Bible in your own everyday life, if you obey the Bible in your decisions and actions, then you will meet the Lord Jesus as the controller of your life, and you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And once that happens, you will remember that God wants you to share the word that he has blessed you with. Yeah. In a capitalistic society such as ours, we think everything is about our enjoyment and uh -huh. consumption. Uh -huh. uh, but not so in the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. In the kingdom of God, it is about God calling us to God's self so that God can use us yeah. for whatever purpose for which we were born. Uh -huh. And the purpose of us uh, being born is that we might glorify God. Uh -huh. And God is glorified when his word is shared. Uh -huh. Did you all hear what I said? I God is glorified when his word is shared. Uh -huh. But don't be surprised by how people respond when you try to give them the word of God. Yes. Everybody does not clap. Yes. The Lord teaches that there are four responses. Uh -huh. First of all, some hear the word, and the Bible says the devil comes Ooh. and takes it out of their heart uh -huh. so that they cannot be saved. That is that. That's really powerful. Yeah. Somebody said, what is the devil doing? The devil is snatching the word out of the world. Right. Somebody said, what is the devil doing? The devil is snatching uh, the presence of God out of the world. Yeah. The devil is snatching the true witness of God out of the world. Yeah. And so don't be surprised. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Because some of us are very sensitive. Yeah. First little thing somebody said, we're ready to run. Uh, First thing happened, we're ready to leave the church. I, I run across the bar and said, I left the church. Well, why did you leave the church? I left the church because so and so stubbed on my toe. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah, they stubbed your toe. They in the air there. They always stubbed my toe if they could. Uh -huh. Lord, have mercy. Have you ever gone to the store and they pushed you? Right. Or they stubbed your toe? Did you stop going to the grocery store? Right. Hey. You ever go to the doctor and you couldn't get seen right away? You had to wait one or two hours? Did you stop going to the doctor? Uh -huh. But, hallelujah, people are always ready to stop going to the church. But don't be surprised. Because the Bible says when you share the word, yes. you put spiritual things in motion. Yes. When you share the word, hallelujah, you make the kingdom of evil send uh, an evil representative to take out the word you share. That's right. But don't worry about that, hallelujah, because this word that you shared is powerful. Yes. Then Jesus says, some hear the word and receive it, but temptation causes them to fall away. Yes. Because the word has to go down deep into your being. Yes. Hallelujah. I was, uh, I was, uh, we have a member of our church that sells Avon products, and she brought me some, uh, well, I brought from her some Avon products, and I was trying to put it on, mm. but it looked, it felt like it was full, but the more I squeezed it, nothing came out. Wow. So I squeezed it, squeezed it, squeezed it. Finally, I was getting up squeezing, and I turned my, I moved my hand, and then it all came out. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> I said, the Lord have mercy. You know, uh, you got to you got to be careful because what's in you can be squeezed out of you. Can I go ahead and talk? Uh, the Bible said the word has to go deep down in your being. And the problem is we spend an hour on the word and five hours watching TV. So guess what's in our being? The problem is we spend so much time on the phone talking to people but very little time reading the Bible. So guess what's in our being? The problem is, we don't ever sit and cut everything off and look out in the sky and meditate on God. Yeah. We get in trouble. We want God to stop running the universe and come to us. But we don't ever treat God like that. I don't say don't ever, but a lot of times we don't treat God like that. And, and, and so we wonder why things don't happen for us because the word is not deep down in our being. You want to know what's deep down in you? Wait till you get mad. Yeah. And see what comes out your mouth. Oh, help me, Holy God. Yeah. You want to know what's deep down? You wait till you get in a fight with somebody. Yeah. One of your family members who know where all your buttons are. Yeah. And then see what happens. Uh -huh. Or can I go ahead and talk? Yeah. You want to know what's deep in you? Wait till you don't have any money. Uh -huh. And see how you react. That's right. Oh, help me, Holy God. Yeah. Uh, 
the word, hallelujah, did not go deep down in some people. Right. And uh, so uh, they were in a place where they could not uh, deal with what God has said. Can I go ahead and preach? Yeah. The Bible says some hear the word, but the word that they hear is choked by the issues in their life. That's right. The word that they hear is choked because they're running after riches and money. Uh -huh. The word that they hear is choked because uh -huh. they're running after pleasure. Yeah. Oh, help me, Holy yeah. Ghost. Yeah. And they bear no fruit. Uh -huh. There are no miracles in that life. Uh -huh. There are no wonders in that life. Uh -huh. There are no signs in that life. Yeah. Uh, because, hallelujah, they are choked by issues, riches, and pleasures. Yeah. And they bear no fruit. But then the Bible says, last but not least, uh -huh. some hear the word of God and they go deep into their hearts, mind, soul, and body. Yeah. One version said, uh, this version said that they cling to it. One version said they hold on to it. Somebody said they hold on to it. Hold on to it. And when they hold on to it, hallelujah, the word yeah. begins to work in them. Yeah. It makes their hearts honest and good. Yeah. And their lives affect others. So yeah. that some people come to be saved and those people help others to be saved. All right. And so, since the Lord Jesus already told us this, let's not worry about uh, how people receive the word. That's right. Your job is to give the word. That's right. Don't worry about, <laughs> hallelujah, how people are going to receive it. Right. This will free you yeah. when you're not worried about how people receive it. Amen. You just make sure that you're giving it out as many ways as you can all the time. Are y'all listening to me? You just make sure that you just don't let anything stop you from giving out the word. Why have people deal with it? That's between them and God. Amen. They have to answer. And when you do this, you'll find yourself free. Amen. Because you're not trying to make people like you or approve of you or give you a nod. You really want God to approve you. Right. And you're going to be approved by God when you're obedient to uh -huh. God. Can I go ahead and talk? Right. Well, uh, I, I, I say this because uh, I want us all to know the key principles of sowing and reaping in the word. Yeah. And we got to get this. My father used to tell me, he said, uh, he said, he said his nickname for me was preaching. After a while, he never called me my name, he called me preaching. Mm -hmm. He said, preacher, he said, you're all right. He said, but uh, one thing I want you to understand, you have suffered in your life because you weren't born on a farm. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, sir. I was very respectful of my father. He said, and then I said, why is that, dad? He said, because you don't know about sowing and reaping. That's right. That's right. And I said, well, daddy, I know a whole lot of things. Y'all might not have known on the farm. He said, yes, you do. He said, but you don't have the patience that it takes to clear the ground. That's right. Because first you gotta clear the ground. Mm -hmm. You gotta break up the foul ground. Yeah. You gotta remove the rocks. Right. You gotta remove the things. Then you gotta sweep over the ground so that it's ready to be dug. That's right. Then you gotta dig up the ground. That's right. So that you can put the seeds in the earth. Come on. You put the seeds in the earth, you gotta cover the seed, the ground up. Then you gotta water it and make it grow. You gotta protect it. Right. Some plants can have too much sun. Uh -huh. Some plants can be pestered by bugs. Right. And he said, see, you raised in the city. He was laughing. He wasn't, you know, putting me down. He said, you raised in the city. He said, you used to instant things. That's right. And then I, said, I was laughing with him. I said, yeah, well, what am I supposed to do? He said, well, he said, uh, just, just learn from the earth. He Come said, on. just, just, just remember all the times I took you down south, because we had to go down south every summer. That's right. And I would say, Daddy, why we gotta keep coming down? He said, something here you need to understand. And he said, remember the times, because he had taken me, uh, and he had taken all of the family on the farm. And one day, he took us on the farm, and uh, we woke up, I woke up in the dark of, Mid of Alabama. Uh -huh. It was so dark you couldn't see your hand. That's right. And uh, I woke up and uh, he took me. I was standing on Lucy's house. I was very scared because she was deaf and she had a shotgun uh -huh. in case somebody came in to rob her. Uh -huh. So he told me, he said, don't, don't make damn Lucy nervous in the middle of the night. You might get shot. Uh -huh. And by him just telling me that I had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. She didn't have a bathroom. Can I talk? 
for like an hour. You had to go outside, and there was a hole. And my father had told me about this. He said, well, she might not have toilet paper. I said, well, she don't have toilet paper. What am I going to use? He said, go get some grass. But thank God she had toilet paper. Hallelujah. And uh, I made it through that night when I was But it woke me up. It was dark. And he brought me to my grandfather's house with our whole family. His 16 brothers, 17 brothers, and three sisters, and all their children had come. Uh -huh. And uh, we started shucking corn. Uh -huh. Cornfield had not been cleaned. There were bees. There were, <coughs> there were miles of bees in the cornfield. Uh -huh. And uh, after a while, they pulled me out the cornfield and pulled me with an old man who was strong as three people. And uh, I left that experience thanking God that I wasn't born in the South. That's right. Oh, y'all don't know here. Yeah. But Daddy told me, he said, there's certain lessons that the earth can teach you. Yeah. And as I got older and I studied the scriptures, I began to learn the lessons. That's right. The book of Ecclesiastes in chapter 11 tells us about some of these lessons. It says, cast your bread upon the water and you'll find it after many days. Now, all of you have had a piece of bread, and you know what happens when bread gets wet. Right. How are you going to take some bread and throw it on the water and get the bread back in many days? You're not, that's not going to happen unless you have faith. That's right. And so the Bible is saying have faith. Hallelujah. When you have faith, hallelujah, certain things come back to you uh, that did not seem like they could happen. The Bible also says in Ecclesiastes, give a portion to seven or even to eight, for you don't know which one will prosper. In other words, when you sow it, sow as much seed as you can. When you tell the people about God, tell as many people as you can. When you deal with people, I mean, even when people call you, people, my bills collectors call me, hallelujah, they get off the phone, and I say, God bless you. They say, oh, 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 yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. You know why? Because I want you to be blessed. I'm sowing the word of God. And when the Bible says, give it to seven, the number completely, give it to eight, the number starting over again. You don't know what's going to happen That's when right. you sow your seed. That's right. Book of Ecclesiastes in chapter 11 also says, if you worry about the wind, you won't sow. That's and if you worry about the clouds, you won't reap. In other words, don't worry about whether or not the conditions are right. So if the situation looks different, difficult rather, so if the situation looks impossible. That's right. It goes on to say, you don't know how the spirit comes to the bone in the womb of a woman for a baby. Therefore, you got to admit you don't know the workings of God who works everything. That's right. In other words, as my grandmother said, God works in mysterious ways. You can't figure God out. Why am I in this situation? You can't figure God out. Why did this happen? You can't figure out God out. What am I going to do? You don't need to figure it out. You need to learn how to stand on the word of God. Oh, can I go ahead and preach today? Y'all going to let me preach today up in here. Look at your neighbor. Your neighbor, stand on the word of God. Oh, help me. Oh, God. Word tells us in the book of Galatians, hallelujah, that you reap what you sow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's why a lot of times, if you mean it nasty, you have so loneliness. Because people don't want to be around that. A lot of times, if you bitter, hallelujah, you, you show a bitter existence. A lot of times, if you uh, are mean to people, I was talking to somebody the other day, I was trying to help, and they snapped at me so hard, I had to call on the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the Lord said, now shut your mouth now, don't you respond. Amen. And so I didn't say nothing, so we were texting. So they wrote me back and said, well, uh, I know you're just trying to help me. And I started to say, yeah, I'm through helping you right now. But the Lord said, that's you, that ain't me. Hallelujah. That, 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 and if you, if, if you show, hallelujah, if you show your anger, yeah. uh -huh. you got to reap anger. Yeah. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. If you show hurt, yeah. you're going to reap hurt. That's right. If you show evil, you're going to reap evil. So make sure you sow it the right thing. The Bible says you reap what you sow. And then the book of Galatians says if you sow to the unspiritual nature, hallelujah, you're going to be corrupt. But if you sow to the spirit, you'll reap life everlasting. Uh, uh, if I could uh, paraphrase big and small, spiritual people do spiritual things. If you're spiritual, hallelujah, you're going to do things that promote uh, the Holy Spirit taking you over and operating in your life. So in this COVID time, 
I came to tell you, hallelujah, in this COVID season, I came to tell you, make sure you stay close to God so God can fill you with the Holy Spirit. Because God is looking for you to pass the word on to someone else. Look at your neighbor and say, you're the one that's supposed to pass it. Mm -hmm. Look at your neighbor, because people think only pastors and deacons and church people are supposed to pass it. But everybody who got the word from God is supposed to pass it. Look on the other side, tell somebody, you're the one who's supposed to pass the word. If you're a Christian. Mm -hmm. When you pass it, hallelujah, you got to understand the word will prove itself. Now, it must be rightly divided. It must be correctly taught. But God will back up his word with signs, wonders, and miracles. What I'm preaching to you today, if you try and test it, I'm relying on God to back it up. One thing I have found, this thing is not magic, but it is powerful. God is not going to do everything you wish and give you everything you want. God is going to do what God wants. But God will make ways where there are no ways. God will bring you out when you're all bound up. God will give you strength when your strength is almost gone. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. The Word will prove itself. Are y'all listening to me? And when it does, your actions will shine with the light of God's presence and the light of God's power. Can I go ahead and talk? When it does, your actions will shine with the light of God's presence and the light of God's power. This is what God wants us to do right now. So and shine. Look at somebody and say, so neighbor. With your, with your words. And then shine, neighbor. Shine. With your actions. Oh, y'all y'all ain't helping me. Look on the other side and say, neighbor, so with your words. So with your attitude. And then shine in your actions. You see, when you began to give yourself to the Lord, you began to shine with the light of God within you. Are y'all listening to me? When you yield to the Holy Spirit, people notice something different about you. Yes, some will hate you and you should look for that. Because some people are in such deep darkness that when light comes, they get mad and they don't want to come to it. Some people will attack you and you should look for that. Some people are so mad at God, hallelujah, that they can't enjoy you giving them the word. But every farmer knows that there's some creatures always trying to destroy the crops. But it's nothing like having put something in the ground and then having it grow up and reaping what you have sown. You keep your mind on sowing and shining. Now this is Black History Month, and that's some Black History right there, because our people, hallelujah, had dealt with uh, so many things. And uh -huh. in 1900, 90% of us lived in the South. Uh, uh, even now, hallelujah, 56% uh, of us still live in the South. Uh -huh. People have gone back to the South. People are leaving church now to go to the South. I ain't mad at you. Go where God tells you. Hallelujah. But one thing about uh, that southern experience that our people had, they knew about sowing and reaping. And if someone had not sowed in your life, you would not be here today. Had you not seen the light of God in your mother, your grandmother, your preacher, your deacon, you wouldn't be watching, you wouldn't be sitting up here today. But somewhere along the way, God touched somebody. And that person that God touched, they reached out to you and told you what thus says the word of God. Hallelujah. And the spirit said in your heart, this is the truth. This is the way. This is the life. And you came to God and got the curtain. Oh, hallelujah. And don't you know, you are the agent of God for someone's tomorrow. You are the agent of God for someone to be able to say, I believe God because he was there. I believe God because she was there. I believe God because I saw him shine in somebody. I saw him shine in their life. I heard him shine in their talk. Oh, hallelujah. You ought to say to somebody next to tell listen, I don't know about you, but I'm going to sow the word of God, and I'm going to let my light shine all around me. 
to go on the other side and tell somebody, I don't know about you. But as for me and my house, we're going to sow the word of God. And I'm going to let my light shine all around me. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory be to God. I came today as I close to tell you to sow till you can't sow no more. I came today as I finish to tell you to shine until the darkness of the devil is lit up all around you. I came today to tell you to sow until the word of God breaks up the fallow ground. I came to tell you to shine until someone gets hungry to have what you have. Someone will see you and see you always are able to smile. Someone will see you and see you always able to shout. And they'll say, I want to be just like that. So keep on sowing and keep on shining so until the kingdom of darkness is defeated shine until the kingdom of light God turns the situation around so until you gotta praise down in your spirit not because of the organ not because of the drum not because of the preacher but you're able to say he brought me a mighty long way. He kept me when I could not keep myself. He changed me when I could not change myself. So until you began to reap a harvest of blessing and then shine until everybody know that you're on the Lord's side. Shine until the Don't get tired. Don't get tired. 
not shining to be put under the bushel. Give us to know, hallelujah, we're supposed to be a spectacle to the world. We're supposed to be something that they've never seen. They can't really understand. Hallelujah, because I am of God. I am of glory. I am a child of God. I'm a man of God. I'm a woman of God. I am of God. Hallelujah. You are God's light. He's going to set you on a hill so that people can see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. God, we thank you for your word. Help us, Lord, not only to hear it, Lord, but receive it in a deep place. And receiving it in a deep place, Lord, help us to live it and obey it. God, this is our prayer. God, if there's anyone here that does not know you, Lord, as a Savior, anyone here does not know you as a God, as a friend, as a mind regulator, as a doctor when we're sick, as a lawyer in a courtroom, I pray that you reveal yourself right now. And that they cry out, what must I do to be saved? And then we can tell them, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You, hallelujah, others in your house will come to know Jesus. Hallelujah. You said if we repent, we turn away from our willfulness and our human sinfulness, our wicked ways. A time of refreshing would come from the very presence of the Lord. You would send the Christ. That was appointed for us. Oh God, I already got Christ, but I still repent. Because I need to be refreshed. Hallelujah, I already got Christ, Lord, but I ask you to wash me clean. So I can be refreshed with your presence. God, I thank you. And I praise you. God, we give you glory right now. In the mighty and master's name of the Lord Jesus. Put your hand together and give God praise. who needs to accept Jesus as Lord. If there's anyone here in the sanctuary that wants to join the church, come. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you and pray with you. Come. Hallelujah. We'll be glad to have you in the church. I'm so excited to come to church. Hallelujah. Because I know God is doing something special here. Not that he's not working anywhere else, but this is his house where his name is. And he said, if my people, hallelujah, as we quote this verse, we don't understand. Solomon had built the Lord a house. And Solomon had prayed that the Lord filled the house. And the Bible said, God filled it with glory. And then God said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin and heal their land. Y'all know we need healing in the land. So we've got to repent and turn from our wicked ways and call on the name of Jesus. If there's anyone here right now, you want to be saved. If there's anybody at home, hallelujah, you ask the Lord to come into your heart. Call me. If you're here, come. If you're watching, call me. Hallelujah. 718-643-1081. Hallelujah. I don't have any product to give you, but I have a new life to offer you. I don't have anything to sell you, but I got something that somebody already paid for. That's a new life. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe sin left the crimson stain, but he washed us pure like snow. Hallelujah. If you're here today and you need Jesus, come. If you're in the sanctuary, if you're watching, call. Let us know you want to join the church. Hallelujah.